Yeah, so in this demonstration, I'm going to talk about how to take a mesh and that came in and I manipulated and created in the 3D digitizer workbench and turn uh, and create wireframe geometry from this mesh. So I'm actually here in the uh, quick surface reconstruction workbench. So if you are in Contia, at least the applications I have in Contia, under shape, I have uh, digitized shape editor, which I use to bring in the point cloud and to create the mesh. Here I'm in quick surface reconstruction to create wireframe entities. So, and primarily here, I'm going to talk about planar sections. But before I get into that, I wanted to just do a quick analysis to see how close my mesh is to the point cloud that I brought in. So there's a nice tool in this workbench. It's called a deviation analysis, and it's going to allow me to check to see how far off my mesh is from uh, the original point cloud. So the reference is going to be the scan that I brought in. So that's the original point cloud scan. Turn that on so you can see it. I've trimmed the mesh up a little bit on the top and the bottom. So the point cloud does overlap with the top and the bottom just a bit. And what I'm going to measure against is the final mesh that I'm using. And I want to keep this simple and just hit apply. And you can see the deviations that happen. And I'm colorblind, unfortunately, so I'll let you relate to the colors you see over here um, and uh, how they relate to the geometry on the screen. But you do have little points here that will, um, at least in this point setting, will talk about the deviation. And I will say this isn't too bad up to uh, 12 thousandths of an inch. And most of these deviations are actually off the top where I've trimmed the mesh away from the point cloud. So that's where I'm getting most of my deviation. So not too bad taking my point cloud, at least for my standards here where I teach on my little scanner that I have. It's not too bad. Um, but that at least does give me a, a, a way to check to make sure that I'm close to what I'm trying to design here. So um, I'm going to take that. I'm actually going to hide it so it's out of the way. Now back to my model. I'm going to get get rid of the point cloud by hiding it and I've got my mesh also notice that I've got a wireframe geometric set that I've created so primarily here I'm just going to cover the very basics of of planar sections so if I'm looking at my toolbar there is a there's a toolbar called scan creation and so I'm going to go to the planar sections tool and I'm going to turn off just for the beginning uh, the option for uh, curve creation and what this is going to do is create a scan and I'm, and I'm only going to do one scan just for this demonstration so I'm going to come over here to my element I'm going to select my element and right now this is parallel to the XY plane you can see that on the dialog box as I drag this up and down, you can see where the scan is going to be created. So I'm just going to leave it right there. And I'm going to do this grouped by plane. What that's going to do is everything in this plane is going to be grouped together into one scan, which is what I want. That's almost what I use uh, probably all the time, really. Uh, there are some exceptions, but usually that's what I use is by plane. So I'm going to hit apply. You can see the scan come in then hit OK. Now that's a scan. That is not a wireframe geometry. It is a scan and you can see it on my, in my geometric set planar section. But I wanted to, typically I do that within, I, I create wireframes directly with planar sections, but I wanted to show you what's going on behind a, a, a couple of extra steps here. So I can take that and I can turn this into uh, a curve, a wireframe geometry. And if I'm looking at my curve creation toolbar, there's an option here for curve from scan. So I'm going to take that option. I want to come in. I'm going to select that scan. And I'm going to look at it. So I like to have, um, I like to have the porcupine analysis turned on. And I'm not going to right now mess with the or play around with these values. 
but maybe I do need to increase okay so I'm going to uh, hit apply and it's going to show me my porcupine analysis and well, it's not too bad but this is supposed to be a symmetrical model uh, it's a clay model I scanned it brought it in created a mesh from it so really that's not too terribly bad but it certainly isn't uh, symmetrical but that is you know I can manipulate this a little bit so I've got some values over here on my curve from scan I've got a tolerance at five thousandths. I'm not going to change that. Maximum order is the number of segments that it's going to create as it go, as it uh, creates the curve. And this gets a little bit into nerve space uh, modeling, but you can see the segments, and it's showing right now that it's got seven segments that it's creating. I could probably count them if I can count that high. I've got one, and these points are really hard to see too. But let me start here. So I got. Ooh, it's still hard to see, but there are segments. I won't count them. There's seven segments around this curve. And so those are uh, essentially, if you want to look at these little miniature curves brought together, uh, you can that way. And the order of that, of each curve, is an order of 10, which uh, essentially means it's a ninth degree curve. Each one of these is a ninth degree curve that's being brought in. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, when you look at it, you really got two sides to this curve. You got a front half there and you got a rear half. Um, that's just the way it's combined together. If I had not grouped this by planar section, you would probably have multiple curves in this area. So I'm gonna leave that there for now, but I'm gonna hide it. And let's go back in and let's try something a little, little bit different here. I'm going to go in, not much different actually, but I'm gonna go in curve from scan and I'm going to I'm going to select that again. I'm going to hit apply so I can see my porcupine analysis. I know it's not going up to 31 segments, but it will go up to 31 potentially. Right now it's showing seven segments with an order of 10. What if I decrease that order down to something like, let's go to six and let's see what happens. So that's going to be a fifth degree Let's just see what changes happen when I do that. Not much of a change, and that's not too bad. You do see a little bit of change. So I've got a maximum deviation of 34 thousandths. Let's pop it down to five and see what happens. So the deviation is going down a little bit. Notice the number of segments. So I've got five, order of five. So the degree of the curves are less, but now I've got 21 of those curves versus before I had a significantly number uh, less than that. So let me pump this up to 10 and let's do it and apply and let's see what happens. So now I'm back at seven with an order of 10. Um, keep going up a little bit. Let's go to maximum order of 12 and let's see what happens. So I've got 12 and six and I'm getting some changes here in my model, uh, but not you know, you're only as good as the mesh that you have to work with um, but that's working right there with um, the curve from scan and showing what my curve is going to look like if this was a curve I ended up going with so I'm going to close that I'm actually going to delete that curve I want to delete that scan as well and what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to put this in with the same planar section tool but I'm going to um, turn on this option for creating a curve from scratch well not from scratch but within the process so I'm going to leave it at 10 and 23 which is the default setting I believe I'm going to leave my number at 1 right now I'm just going to select my model again so that's very close to what I had before I'm going to move it up a little bit now I can increase the number here Let's say I want to go with three. It's going to keep the setting I had it at. It's going to create, right now I've got four sections it would create, which is fine for a lot of situations. If you've got a model, um, I use this a lot. Just go ahead and 
select the number of sections I want to create and it will go ahead and create all those curves and let me just go ahead and do that I'll let it apply here you'll see the porcupine analysis for each one you'll see that it's bringing in uh, the planar sections over here it's showing six coming in because I have six here and it's grouped by plane so when I hit OK it created my six curves which is fine if that's what you want that's great uh, I try to be a little bit more intentional, so I'm going to delete those for models such as this at least. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to go back and do the tool one more time. Select my model, but this time I'm going to go back to one. Only because I'm just being more intentional. And the, the reason why I'm being more intentional is so I want to put my planar section where I think it's going to do me the most good. I'll look at this from the front. So let's create, uh, I'm going to create one. So we're down near the bottom. It's kind of more of an art than a science. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put it right there. And once you do this a number of times, you kind of get the feel of where it needs to go. I'm going to hit apply. And then I'm going to drag it up to where I want my next section to be. Apply. And apply. And I'm going to just keep going up. Now, my objective eventually is to use the multi-section surface tool to create my surface. Now, I will tell you, and I have students do this, they would create a loft with all these cross sections, which is well against my best practice for how to do surface modeling. But I am going to use these uh, for lofts, some of these cross sections for my loft, but I'm also going to use them for um, planar um, planar sections so I'm sorry I'm also going to use them for guide curves primarily for guide curves let me just touch off up here so um, you can look at this and go wow that's going to make a great loft then you can create a loft for this that's fine it's probably not going to be a good surface model but you can certainly create a loft from this so what I typically will do is I will um, lay all this out with intersections and th these are all curves so I will create and I, and I like symmetry of course so I would lay out all of this and um, create intersection points with the various planes on the axis system or you can try using extremal points. I've just found that intersection points tend to work better for me. I'll show you an example of that here right now. So if I go to, um, if I may have to go back to the GSD workbench, it looks like I do. I keep forgetting that this the intersection tool, or maybe it is here and I'm just overlooking it. Um, but I like to use the intersection tool to do an intersection between the reference plane and each curve for all four sides too. And that can get kind of monotonous. So when I do this, it's going to intersect in two locations. The can is going to ask you, hey, where do you want it? Do you want both? Do you want one side or the other? You can do a near or far. What I like to do is, is to do an extrapolate. So when I get to this multi result management option, I'm going to do one with an extraction. So I can hit OK there, and then I can come back in and just select that as the one I'd like to keep. And it leaves me a point there. And then, of course, go around to the other sides. And again, it just gets monotonous. I know it, but just have to work your way through it. And if you're thinking ahead about the sections you're going to use and where you're going to put your guides, it may help a little bit to get down on the number of points you need to create. So if I, if I step back right now, I can go, hey, I want, usually I could probably do something like this with just two cross sections. I've been thinking through it to begin with, but maybe three, uh, but I can look back and go, well, I gotta be very intentional. I know I want a guy that's gonna follow my finger grips here and the back side doesn't need as many, nor do the two sides need as many points. So um, 
that again gets back to principles of good curve creation. But I'm going to use all of these, at, especially for this front half and for my guide. So again, I'm creating points and what I'm going to end up, right now I've got two, but I'm going to end up with a whole bunch of points later. I've got another model I'm going to show you that I've already created. So if I, when I come back here in a few minutes, I'm going to have a different model, but with the same approach um, and kind of finish off what I'm talking about here with the planar sections.